Hey folks, Jonathan here. Figured I'd try to do something with the steering on this little rat rod. And not sure what I'm going to be able to do. And if I'm going to be able to find a box or get a box or have a box that's going to fit in there. I did pick one up from Aaron, a buddy of mine, but I don't know if it's going to work or not. We're going to see. Uh, it's off a of, uh, 50 for one Dodge or something. Anyway, of course, here's our problem. We got over a quarter turn of play. You can see this running in and out as I steer it. So that's telling me that we've probably got bearings bad top or bottom on this end or this end of this box. But it also steers really, really hard. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to jack it up. I'm going to make sure that it's the steering box that's making it steer hard and not, you know, uh, the uh, king pans or something like that. That'll be our first thing we do. Now, our other issue that may be an issue, may not be an issue, is torque steer. We're wondering whether, because, you know, there's a lot of play in it, so it's really hard to tell, but if this rear end is kicking left and right when, uh, when you accelerate and decelerate, uh, you know, that'll give you a rear steer. That'll make you uh, not steer right, you know, no different than if the front was bad. So that's something we're going to try to address, too, if this steering box you know, getting one on there, don't take care of it, but that'll be after. But uh, like I said, first thing we're going to do is go ahead and jack it up, and then we're going to see what is so tight about the steering of why it don't want to steer. You know, if there's a bearing bat in that box, it could be the making the box tight too and not, not letting it steer. But we're going to see, you know, try to start pinpointing, and then we'll get this box off. We're probably going to have to cut the mount off because of the way the box is mounted on there. Uh, I can't use a box that comes out the side like this because the pitman arm actually goes down on them boxes and that would make it steer backwards you know if I flipped it up so and I can't let it steer down because we need we could, we've got to keep it on top so this box is actually one that would have laid down and been mounted on the frame with them bolts and you know the the pitman arm or the shaft in the box would went straight down the pitman arm would have came out and that's what would steer it so what we've got to do is figure out what box we can use. I think we can actually use a, uh, if that Dodge box don't work, I've got a 64 Chevrolet pickup box that may work manual. Uh, but we'll, we'll figure that out as we go. All right, show you more. Okay. So now we know one thing's for sure. It's not the weight of the car that's killing our steering. I can't, I can barely get it to steer with the wheels off the ground. So to be sure, I'm going to go ahead and unhook it here, and we'll see if that turns without any pressure from the box here. See what our problem is. All right. Okay. Got the stern arm unhooked, and this seems to turn really easy, no problem. But our steering box still turns hard. So that's a good thing. We know it's in the stern box. So. What I'm probably going to do, like I said, is cut this off. We'll cut the shaft. We are not going to run it like it's run. We're going to run a U-joint setup. I'm going to take a short tilt column out of one of these, uh, I'm not going to say a foreign car, but maybe a later model Chevrolet or something. We're going to put something different in here because we want to get more clearance. I'd rather use a bigger steering wheel, but to do that we need to have a tilt or have the steering wheel up higher. So we're going to do whatever we need to do to take care of that. But I guess first thing is to get this box off, and I don't think the box is going to come off. If I pull the pitman arm and I pull the bolts out, you know, we've still got this issue. But I don't think it's going to come over far enough to come out of there. So I think what we're going to do is just cut the, uh, cut the mount, and we'll redo the mount. Uh, cut it off and weld it all back on. And they may have taken it right here. But, you know, you still, with this going through the body, you know, there's just no, there's no good way of doing this. So, I don't think, it's not going to come over far enough to, for this to come out, for it to come down. So, I just don't see, any, I don't see a choice. I think a, cutting the uh, mount would be best. Uh, you know, it's, it's been welded anyway, so what's the difference? You know, we can weld it right back on. So, let's see if we can get this box off. I think we'll move this thing up closer because we're going to have to have a welder. Get it closer to the shop where I can get the welder to it. Maybe take plasma and just pop that off there. Go ahead and just burn this, burn all this crap out of the way and go ahead and start over here. 
and see if we can get a box together that's going to work on this thing. All right. All right, fit my arms off. Got it up here enough close to the shop where I can get the welder to it. I think what I'm going to do, cut this outside tube down low and then cut the inside up high. Just in case we ever need to use the box, we can put a U-joint on it. And then I'll probably just going to cut this mount up here and right across the old weld and get it out of the way. And then uh, we can get the steering gearbox out of the way, see if we can get something set up different. All right, there's my mess. It didn't take long. And there's our culprit. That's our problem. Weird looking box. We might pull the cover, pull something later and see what's wrong with it, but for now, we'll get this cleaned up, get this column out of here. Okay, here's our dodge box. And my only worry is how long this is. The reason I say that is we will run into the header or the exhaust to come out too far and may run into the steering when this wheel turns if we bring it out too far. So we're going to check a Chevrolet box I got and I'm going to call a buddy of mine and see what he has got. Okay, we got the 64 Chevrolet box off and uh, you don't have to have a torch to take one of these boxes off but it helps so we got it off okay the biggest thing the biggest differences on these is this box mounted on the outside of the frame these mounted on the inside of the frame so what it does is it puts your plate and your mount on the opposite side so if I use this my neighbors are shooting but no big deal uh, probably here in the background so using this box, it would actually be mounted with it on the bottom instead of the plate over the top. So if we do that, we make a plate, we can bolt this thing on, and then if we ever have change or somebody has to change it, they can take it back off easy. So that's the good thing about this box. Plus this box is in really good shape. Absolutely no play in it. And it was on a half-ton full-size pickup. So if it'll handle it, it should handle you know anything we put on it. I think that will be the box we use. Uh, I've wanted to use this one that I picked up from a buddy of mine, but the problem is, is it sticks out too far. And, you know, that was one of my worries because I had another box out back, but it stuck really far. I checked the Ford Falcon, 62 Ford Falcon, the parts car, and it stuck out, you know, it hung down so far, it just made it stick out wide. So this is the best bet so far. So we're gonna get this box cleaned up and get all the dirt off of it and stuff, and then uh, get it unbolted off this frame and then, uh, Start trying to get it mounted, maybe get some steering on it besides the column. The column, I'm going to have to go find one and, you know, find what I really want. Try to find what I want or we'll make what, what we need. And then uh, hopefully I can get this thing together, maybe tomorrow sometime. So we'll keep at it though. Okay. We have got it cleaned up, got the horn off. And what I've decided because we're kind of close over here. I mean, we could work with it, but I don't want to. I don't want to deal with it. And since we need this to come up and out, we will just cut their piece off. We're gonna make us a new plate, and we'll put a plate right on the frame. Angle this box up where I want it angled, and work with it from there. I think I can. Uh, I think I can work with it. And our main thing is we've got to get this where it's centered, and that way we can steer. You know the, the full amount each direction so uh, this box I really think it's so smooth and I think it's gonna work out so much better and uh, we'll wire brush it and paint it you know when we get done here before we put it on and it's not gonna look as good because they're not gonna have the cover over the top of it you know like the other box did but I really don't care I you know I'd rather it be safe than dangerous and that's what we're going for so I think I can work with that. So let me uh, get at it a little more here and see if we can get it all figured out. All right. Sometimes you just have to start over from the beginning. So now I think we will go ahead and get some uh, get a plate made. Figure out how I want to do it, and see if we can't start getting this thing mounted. Get the right angle on it to go up toward that hole. And uh, I think stern arm is going to work good because that pitman arm goes on in four spots. Uh, I think it's going to work out alright. 
All right, I'm a good plate man. Okay, so I found this piece of angle that's been cut up. Now this is three eighths. This is a little thicker than the quarter, but we are going to mount it on here. I'm going to do some trimming on it, some grinding on it, and I just marked out where I wanted my one of my uh, stringer box to mount, and then we'll have we'll drill the three holes in it. I think it'll work out really well. That'll give me a chance to weld it down the side of the frame, and then partially maybe on top. We'll see how it looks. All right, we're getting close. Uh, got the plate drilled. Got the plate cut out how I want it. I just got to grind it and clean it up. Grind the frame. I still got to clean everything, but but this is basically what we've got. We've got it wrapping down the side so we can get a good weld. And uh, once we get it mounted in there, it won't be anywhere near our transmission. Should work out really well. So we're going to uh, see what we can do from here, and then we'll tack it on, and then we'll see if we can get our steering right. I want to, before we weld this plate on, you know, permanent or anything like that, I want to go ahead and jack the front back up, make our arm, and make sure it steers all the way left, all the way right, just like it should. Okay, for now we've just got it clamped on. Uh, I think I need to go a little bit lower. Anyway, we've got it clamped on, and... We'll have plenty of weld up here, down here, and then all the way around. Let's see, around it on the side of the frame, so we won't have to worry about it going anywhere at all. And then uh, U joint, we can run it through, no problem. Uh, what I've got now is I'll show you it's all the way back, all the way forward. It goes a long ways forward. Uh, because we don't have this thing flat, you know, we've got to have it tilted. But the only thing I can do about that is change the angle of the the pitman arm coming off. But well, I'll get my other battery for my camera. It's always something, man. Okay, I must have a battery going back because it hadn't been long enough to put that one in. All right. So what we want to do? Okay, we got it all the way to the left. We're going to mark it. Right at the top of it, we're going to count the turns. Hopefully I can count them without rubbing that off. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, and let me see, right at a half, six and a half. So three and a quarter turns. So let's go all the way back and go three and a quarter. One, two, three and a quarter. And that is about straight centered. We've got our wheel straight. And well, that's about as good as we're gonna get it. It's not too far off. I think it'll work like it is, as long as you don't want this falling over too far. But uh, I think that would actually work. So we're going to cut this off, V it, grind it, and then we'll cut the top off of this one, which is smaller. And then we're going to weld it and blend it together. And make it, of course, because it'll slide on it. And that'll get us our steering, and we're out here where we need to be. work out good so let me see I think I'll go ahead and get this cut and made real quick okay it's gonna get dark on me I'm trying to hurry okay you can see we got that cut and then we got this cut to length we'll go on top and as you can see we got plenty of extra here so I'm gonna clean all this up really good I'm still going to be this one and then I'm gonna weld it and then I'm gonna build the weld up really well and get it to where it you know good and strong and I know it's gonna be strong now you got to make sure that your tapers right because the the big end has to come out a little end to the inside for that and also the taper on that one so we'll just mark it that way we'll we know we don't screw up and put it on backwards so, all right let me get it that we got it welded in now we're gonna weld it up and make it good and solid and then we'll grind it and probably build up part of it make it look like it's supposed to be together uh 
you know the problem with this is a lot of people would take this piece and they would uh, take it to somebody to weld it that probably couldn't weld as good as they could weld but because they worry about stuff like this you know sometimes you just gotta suck it up and do things yourself because chances are if you're doing it for yourself you're gonna do a better job than the person that's doing it for you they don't care as much about your safety so all right all right I think we've got it built up enough to to start grinding as soon as it cools down try to make it look like it's all supposed to be one piece okay folks I'm not finished with it yet but we've got got it ground quite a bit of it anyway clean it up some more we gotta clean the box up yet and paint it and of course get everything lined up where we need it but so far so good uh, I think I'm gonna jack the wheel up turn it right turn it left by hand with the box just clamped on there and see what happens but of course I'm out of daylight but we'll do that once real quick before I stop and then uh, I'll be finished rest up tomorrow okay steers both ways all the way but our box has more travel than our front end does and I can actually move the box forward a little bit get this bar straighter up and down and it'll still steer both ways all the way so we've got it stops on the front end so we're actually gonna we're gonna center it up to where the box works both ways uh, make sure it steers both ways all the way and uh, shouldn't be an issue I probably could have shortened this arm up some I went the same length as it was the same length as they had on it but I could probably could have shortened it up a little bit and maybe made my steering even been easier and still had enough travel but it's not a big issue because I don't think we're gonna have any issues with steering now uh, I think this box is gonna be plenty plenty strong enough to be able to uh, you know steer this thing because it's so light a lot easier than it did Anyway, I'm going to call this a video, call it a night, and we're going to knock this out tomorrow. Go ahead and get a, some kind of a steering column in it and get this uh, box exactly where I want it mounted, get everything cleaned up and painted and uh, back together, and then we'll start on the column. Go ahead and see if we can get it finished up tomorrow. And I think that's it. I might work on the bike a little bit more tonight, but uh, we'll see. All right. Appreciate everybody watching. Bye.